Shut up and sit down. Hi, hello. I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you for watching. So for the astute washers, watchers out there, you will notice that I am not in my regular studio. No, we are uh, on holiday at the beach and I wanted to get out a couple videos. I've been on travel for a couple weeks and have not been able to make any videos for probably close to a month and a half now. So wanted to quickly walk everyone through a project I did recently with the CN combination of the CNC machine, a Fusion 360, as well as uh, a new inlay technique that I'm checking out uh, using resin fill. So uh, let's cut over to Fusion and I'll walk you through the project real quickly and then uh, show you some pictures of the, of the project. So hopefully you can hear me on this. I'm gonna walk you through this real quickly. Uh, what we have here in front of us is the Fusion model. I'm gonna turn on the sketch. This is a project that someone uh, asked me to build for them. This is actually the emblem of the Explosive Ordnance Disposal Team. Um, they wanted this done in both a wood uh, inlay as well as a resin inlay. So this turned out to be a, a fairly challenging project because I had to, I've never done resin before and uh, I had to figure all that out. And so this emblem actually is fairly complicated when it comes to uh, the arcs and curves, which really causes fusion uh, to have fits. <laughs> So let me turn off the sketch here, turn on the body. This is what it looks like when it's all done. Uh, these are just pockets, um, or in, in the model view, these are just ex negative ex extrusions right now down into the model, and these will be filled with resin in the final product. And then I will switch over to easel and show you the project that I made uh, for the inlay, and I'll, I'll talk about why I used easel instead of fusion. Okay, so here I am in easel. What you can see on the left-hand side is the image that I imported, and then the right-hand side is the simulation of the cut. Now, we're not really interested in this particular uh, simulation because we're not, um, uh, it doesn't represent what we want to do here. So what I want to do is I want to add two workspaces by clicking this plus button here twice. And these separate workspaces, uh, I'm going to rename this one to be uh, pocket, and then I'm going to rename this guy here to be inlay. Right, so we're gonna go back over here, we're gonna select this image and click this little button called Apps. And this will bring up this window here and you can see the featured app is the inlay generator. This thing is smoking hot, super easy to use. It's a heck of a lot easier than the previous workflow that I've been using. So I'm gonna click on it. You're gonna tell it the bit size, the tolerance in this case, I want the tolerance to be 0.5, um, I'm sorry, 5 thousandths. Um, 0 0.005 uh, and it'll see it'll show you the preview here of the two cuts it's going to make this is the actual inlay itself and then this is the pocket um, it is that easy to generate an inlay so it takes the image it has these super sharp corners you can see here and it rounds it over for you automatically to fit the bit size so much easier than editing it in Inkscape. In Inkscape, so much easier. So click import now it does pull this in it generates it pretty quickly um, whoops uh, what's going on here all right, import, there we go. It does plop it down on the, the workspace that you were working in. So I always hit Control X, go back over to my pocket here, we'll hit paste. Uh, I will deselect both of them here, and then I will select the inlay. Hit Control X or Command X for me, and there you go. So in this case, uh, the wood is 18 by 12 for me. You can select the pocket, say edit, center to material that puts it in the, the center of your wood piece here. Now for the inlay, it doesn't really matter uh, where you're cutting it. it, it's your personal preference. I usually do it uh, close to the lower left. Uh, but that's it. This generates the, the actual inlay and then the pocket in the material you're cutting in. Super, super duper easy. Um, uh, way, 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 way easier than what I've been doing in the past. All right, guys, so that's easel. I hope you, uh, hope you found that useful. All right, so that was Fusion and Easel. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm gonna cut over now to show you some pictures, a little video montage of the final products. Uh, probably do a little voiceover there in the middle to explain some of the stuff that I'm doing as well. So let's cut over. <laughs>
is a picture of the final inlay after I routed it. Uh, I used the blue tape method of attaching it down to the wasteboard because I had a lot of parts you can see that could fly out and I didn't want to uh, have a bunch of tabs. Now the downside of this in the very next picture, which you can see here, is that I broke it while I was removing it. Didn't really understand the significance of that uh, until I went to put it in and then I found this part missing and then I had to dig to the trash. Fortunately, I was able to find the part, put it in, and then attach it without any problems. Okay, there you go. That's the project. I hope you enjoyed that. A uh, very similar workflow to what I've done in the past, except for the resin. Turned out working very well. I'll probably do a separate tutorial just on uh, how to do the resin, mixing it and tinting it and then pouring it. Um, but I, I hope you enjoyed the project. If you liked the video, thumbs up as always. If you don't like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up anyway. Don't forget to subscribe. Very important these days. Ring that bell. Uh, and we hope to see everyone soon. Thanks everyone. Thank you.